everybody, and welcome to Books Unbound, the podcast where we unbind books to get to their hearts with your hosts, us. It's Ariel and Raylene. It felt like a lot of sounds that time. Is it not always like that? That's funny. It is, but I felt like this time I got in my head about it. I suddenly became deeply aware of it. Um Today is a really, really hot day here. Mm. Um, it's, well, it's not that hot. It's 27. It's 27 degrees. Yeah, and so it's feeling like a proper summer day. And yesterday and the day before were kind of, kind of not warm. They were a little almost chilly. And mm. then tomorrow and the rest of the week, it's supposed to be pretty mild. So it feels like a, a peak at summer. And it makes me want to jump into the ocean. Oh. In a positive way, yeah. not in a bad way, <laughs> in a good way. I want to run free into the sea. Absolutely. Um, how's the weather over there? Oh, it's good. Over the weekend, it was, like you said, kind of similar to you. Like, it was really rainy and gloomy on Saturday. Okay. But yeah. um, I actually really liked that because my friends and I went for a big hike. Ooh, which yes. I, I saw the photos of yeah, that. Yeah, which I, like, never do. I'm not a big hiker, but I want to become more of a, a hiker, a hikist. Um, because, yeah, we went and it was kind of... A really big hike for my first hike in a while, which was a little bit scary. I'm very sore. It was about mm. a five hour long hike, all told. Oh, that's a huge yeah. hike, right? Yeah. Oh my God. And it was like okay. really steep, but like the goal was that we were hiking to a lake, which was okay. also fun because it was like near me. I've never ever even heard of this lake or hike, but it's like really near to where I grew up. So I was like, this is crazy. But anyway, so we were like, oh yeah, it'll be great. Like we planned this a couple of weeks ago. We'll go on this big hike and then we can swim in the lake when we get to the top. Yes. But it was super, super cold and raining when we went. So we didn't uh... end up swimming. And it was actually kind of funny. You couldn't see the water basically at all. Like you could see just like the- It was so foggy. Little, yeah, it was so foggy that it just looked like a sheet of white. <laughs> so we were like, Whoa. even if we were to go into the water, like you could get lost in there. <laughs> so we didn't do that, but it was it was a lot of fun. But yeah, I'm cool. so, so out of shape, man. And I got bit by mosquitoes. Like I, I counted 20. I have at least 20 bites. That's so horrible. And I put bug spray on and they bit me through my clothing. So that was nice. But other good than that, things God. are good. It's looking sunny over here now. <laughs> so that's all good. I feel like, um, I don't know, on online and in, in movies as well, it's not just the internet, but just like in depictions of the outdoors, mm -hmm. everyone's so free and unencumbered. Yeah. But the reality is bugs. So Like bugs. it's always <laughs> bugs, whether it's mosquitoes or flies or ticks or whatever the bug is. Mm -hmm. And there's a reason that we use the expression, you're bugging me, right? Because yeah. like, they're annoying. They're so annoying. <laughs> they're annoying. <laughs> I, uh, I had a really packed weekend. It's, I honestly feel like recently life has been unrelenting, mm. not in a bad way, but just in it's like one thing after another. Yeah. And I'm just like on to the next thing. On, I don't really have time in between to do anything. I just totally. have to do the next thing. Mm -hmm. um, but right now my friend is visiting from out of town. She just got here this morning. I picked her up at the airport and we drove home. And thankfully she also had to do work. So I was like, the first thing we do in our big hangout is I have to record the podcast. <laughs> That's so cute. Um, yeah, so, uh, but thankfully she also has work. So we're, uh, we're taking a break. We had a nice lunch and now we're um, working. And then there's, I'm just, I love where I live. And I haven't felt this attached to a place that I've lived mm. possibly ever because I know I'm not going to move for a really long time, yeah. right? Like I bought this house, I'm stuck here for a while. Mm -hmm. And in a way it's so great because it's just like, well, just accept it. And it's, it's a cheesy saying, but I actually really love it. That expression that's um, bloom where you're planted. You know that one? Yeah. Have you heard that before? I don't before? think I've ever heard that. It's just, yeah, I, I don't remember where I heard it, somewhere online, I'm sure, but it, it's just like the idea of wherever you are, you can bloom, right? Mm -hmm. You can like have a good time wherever you are. And so I'm like, yeah, this is where I'm planted right now. And I just really love my town and the area and the natural beauty and like living on the coast and mm -hmm. stuff. And when people come by, I'm so excited to show them around and be like, I found, I know all these cool spots and stuff. So I'm very excited for her visit. It's gonna be a lot of fun and, um. Also, it's like the first time somebody's visited the house for a while and I'm just like, okay, yes, yeah. but there's m one or two more rooms that are nice now. And like, <laughs> I'm really yeah. excited, Raylene, for you to come back because when you yeah, visited, it was so early on in the whole journey, very little was done in the house. 
And now I'm like, I have a beautiful guest room and like all of these things that mm -hmm. are nice for you to stay in and, and see. But also I've just discovered so much about the local area yeah. that I like have spots Explore to hit more. up, you know? That'd yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I found out about like this really nice restaurant that's nearby. And I sort of like what you're saying with this lake mm -hmm. where it's like, it's not that far away. I don't know how I didn't know about it. Yeah. Now I've discovered it. It's literally the best restaurant in oh the area. <laughs> and I was right now when we were having lunch, um, they were like, are you doing anything fun today? And I was like, I'm taking her to that restaurant. And the waitress was like, oh, that really is the best one in town. I was like, how does everyone know about it? <laughs> I was Why like, did nobody tell me? <laughs> Why did no one tell me that? Um, yeah. Anyway, so it's been really a busy time. I am excited, though, because I did manage to fit in some reading amongst mm. the hecticness. So I finished a book. I am reading something I'm really enjoying. I know that you've done a lot of reading. You also have yeah. some books to haul this episode. Yep. Um, and I also have okay. some book news. So we have a, a good, fully packed episode. Um, but before we jump into our normal reading updates and stuff, we wanted to... Uh, kind of wrap with a little bow yep. um, for mashed potato May. True. So, Raylene, for, there's it's very possible that this could be some people's first episode because mm. also because our last episode was with Claire, and so if True. new people have joined because of Claire, uh, do you want to explain to the people what mashed potatoes are and more kind of specifically <laughs> like mashed potato May? Yeah. What the hell is that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was about to just say so. Ma mashed potatoes are a type of potato that. <laughs> <laughs> no, just kidding. So yeah, we kind of coined this term mashed potato books a long, long time ago. And it essentially is used to mean any book that you have had either physically on your TBR for a long time or just mentally that you've been wanting to read for a long time. But you're yep. it's so hyped up in your head that you're almost putting it off because you're almost scared to read it or you're saving it for the right time. Um, so that's the the general gist of mashed potatoes. Yes. And then um, just last year, we started doing mashed potato May where during the month of May, our goal is to tackle as many of these as possible. And so yeah. all of our listeners, well, not all of our listeners, but as many listeners who want to participate also participate. And it's just a good old time. Um, yeah. So I guess before we jump into like the community wrap up, we could just talk about what we managed yes. to read. Um, that's a great idea. Yeah. So, Start us off. Yeah. So my TBR that I made, I didn't exactly follow it. I read one book off of it, which was A Visit from the Goon Squad by Jennifer Egan. So I'm glad okay. that I tackled that. My other two yeah. books, Dead Girls by Abigail Tartlin and Out by Natsuo Kirino, did not read those. Still excited okay. to read them. Just didn't, wasn't in the mood for like a murder mystery anymore. Uh, so yeah. I ended up jumping into The Way of Kings instead as well as Know My Name by Chanel Miller. I read Know My Name by Chanel Miller, loved it. Yes. New favorite yes. book, like love yes. that book so much. Um, my update with The Way of Kings is that I've DNF'd it. <laughs> Wait, the Brandon Sanderson one, yeah. the giant one, yeah. like permanently, like for the yeah. rest of your life? Yeah, like I'm not okay. going to read the rest of the series. <laughs> Let's talk about that then yeah. for a second, because that's very interesting. Yes. I feel like that's not what anyone saw. Coming. I know. Nobody saw this coming. Everybody predicted oh, I would breaking read it news. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's shocking and yeah, I decided this about a week ago and I have felt so free ever since I decided oh, to put wow, okay. it down. So, I was listening to the audiobook and that's totally fine. Yes. The audiobook is good. It's narrated yeah. by the same guy who does Mistborn and I really like his narration. So, no problem there. But I listened to gosh, I want to say like 17 hours or something. Whatever amounts wow. to 400 pages. So, I read oh, almost half God. of the book and okay no one can say you didn't try exactly this is what i'm saying this is what like, i'm like that to say. isn't i read a hundred even a hundred pages i would have been like that's loads but exactly. 400 pages i read God. i read 400 pages of this book and i was interested by the very very beginning of the book and then just yeah. fairly mid throughout the rest of the hundreds of pages <laughs> i read like i really liked the prequel because i found the oh. character that was introduced in the prequel very interesting but he's like not a thing at least not from what i read like he has like okay. maybe two pages um, dedicated to him that pop up oh, after. Okay. And I was just like, oh, well, this is the only thing I'm interested in. I also find that it's the type of fantasy book where you're just dropped in and expected to pick it all up and understand. And I feel like 400 pages mm. in, I should have a little bit more of a grasp on the fantasy oh, world yeah. than I did. And I was also Yikes. reading it with one of my friends and she's having like similar kind of problems with it. Okay, where, that's validating. Yeah, where it's just like, <laughs> I'm just not interested in the world i don't understand the yeah. world to begin with but I, like there's Ooh. nothing that's really drawing me into it the characters aren't 
anything all that special to me. Yeah. Like, I'm sure people grow to love the characters, but from 400 pages, I should have gotten a little bit more. It's just how I felt. I felt like I wasn't getting enough bang for my buck. And I just didn't want to pick it up anymore. Like, I truly just didn't feel like reading it anymore. And so I just decided, you know what? This one isn't for me. I don't have to be into every single Brandon Sanderson book just because I like Mistborn. Um, It's sort of like V.E. Schwab. Like, I like one or two of her books and have disliked pretty much all the rest that I've tried. Like I, every author has like, you know, some books that might work, some that might not, you don't have to necessarily enjoy all of them. So I just decided to just to give it up and say, you know what, I'm taking these massive books off of my TBR yeah. and I feel so free now. There's so much physical space on there now, which is just awesome. Yeah. But yeah, so that, I wow. mean, in a way it, it still accomplished a goal of mashed potato may which was to tackle a book i've been meaning to read for a long it's time it's about the data exactly it's about the data exactly it's not if it, you like it or not it's about like finally figuring out if exactly like, like I, those books yeah. could have stayed on my shelves for 10 years and i would have just been like oh i'm so excited to read that but now i know i'm not excited to read it and it's gone and i'm yeah. happier for it so that's pretty much everything that happened to me wow. in that month um like i had a big dnf and like a new favorite so it was a pretty successful month for me i think <laughs> even yeah. all things considered all things considered yeah <laughs> um i was gonna ask with the with the one that you just gave up on did you own any of the sequels already yeah i owned the first three books in the series Okay. Which is why there's so, so much space on my TBR I shelf I see now. what you're saying. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There was wow. three big bricks that are now Out of there. off my shelf. <laughs> my other question yes. about that, because this is breaking news, really. I know. Uh, my other question about that is, that was, this is, is this the book series that Kyle really likes? No. That's, no, that's a different The author. Way of Shadows. Yes, exactly. And this is The Way of Kings. Exactly. Good memory, Okay. <laughs> I really remember that kyle loves that series and i was like wait did you just dnf his favorite series of all time no i've read the first two books i've actually read the first two books in that series i just haven't read book three yet that's one that okay okay i won't stop hearing about that until i read it (laughs) (laughs) that's awesome all right well i do think you had a slightly more successful um mashed potato made than i did Mm. But I will also recap. So I had three books that I wanted to get to. Swimming Studies, I dipped into, and I was really enjoying mm. it again. But it was not, I wasn't in the mood for it. That's the worst. Like, I read a couple pages, and I was like, God, this book is actually really, it's, like, so good. And because it's, like, kind of a vignette memoir, yeah. I really didn't feel the need to go back and reread the first right. 100 pages or whatever. But I was like, this feels like a summer when I'm swimming book and it's spring and rainy. Ooh, like I, I just, see. I wasn't feeling the vibes on it. So I kind of put that down and then I read, um, the other book that I wanted to read was Homesick for Another Planet. Right. By Otessa Moshbeck. And I listened to more of it. I just don't like it. Yeah. It's I just good. don't like that <laughs> book really. Yeah. Understandable. <laughs> I mean, you can just DNF it. There's no shame in that, right? I I know, but I'm also like, I'm just two so stories short yeah. from finishing it. So I may as well just finish it. Yeah. Um. What was the other book that I was going to read? That's a great question. How have I forgotten? I have no third? clue. Ariel? <laughs> they were all books that I DNF. Oh, geez, Louise. Live on the pod. Whatever it is, I think you need to get rid of it if you can't even remember it. That's a compelling argument, right? <laughs> Did you really want to read it? Did you really You're certainly read it? not wrong. <laughs> um, I'm literally scrolling back on our Instagram right now because I'm like, didn't we post a photo of the like TBR pile? I think. Um, and I, oh my God. God, this is shameful. I'm actually scared to say what it is. Tell me. It's a down and out in Paris <gasps> by George Orwell. <laughs> oh my God. Drama. Speaking of breaking news. Ariel <laughs> forgot she wanted to read George Orwell. <laughs> it's almost like that book has very genuinely become the king of mashed Ooh, potato books. Yeah, I know what you mean. Like just the idea of reading it is terrifying to me. <laughs> I'm like, at this point I've built it up so much. I've, I, I've put it on multiple yes. lists. I'm like, I'm like, what? How, what is it going to take for me to read that book? I think I'm going to have to be like strapped into a chair and Connor's just going to have to read it out loud for me. Oh, God. And you're going to love every second of it. Yeah, I'm going to be like, why didn't I do this earlier? <laughs> <laughs> um, 
However, that would make it sound like this whole month was a wash for me. Mm. It was not. No, I read something. one of my new favorite books of all time that absolutely was a mashed potato book for me, and it was The Blue Castle by Lucy Mon Montgomery. I read that as a mashed potato book that was like going off piste. I was like, I'm I wanted to read that for years. I've owned mm -hmm. it for a couple, like maybe two years now. I'm like, I keep meaning to read it. I keep, I've started it like twice. I'm like, I'm just going to do it. And I read it in like two days. I stayed up so late good. reading it. I was just taken away by it. I keep recommending it to people. I just think it's such a beautiful book. So for me, the M mashed potato may brought me this really beautiful book yeah. that I've been meaning to read. And I'm like so glad that I didn't wait a lot longer to read it. Totally. I like finally tackled it. So I actually think I feel personally like it was a success, but like on paper, it was a complete and unmitigated yeah. disaster. But I mean, that's similar to what I did. <laughs> I went off TBR and just picked something else that felt yeah. right in the moment and it ended up being the perfect thing for that moment and a new favorite so i think so. i think next year we got to learn for mashed potato may to like not do a tbr yeah just see where the like, wind takes just you. see where the mood is and then tackle tbr or tackle mashed potato yeah. books for sure but just not put a, like a label on which one yeah because that's uh, as we've it learned didn't work. i mean we keep doing it again and again but every time again we make a again. tbr it fails <laughs> Yeah, because it's too stressful, and then we freak out. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and we panic. We absolutely do. Um, okay, so that was mashed potato for mashed potato May for us, mm -hmm. but what about for the people? Raylene asked on Instagram how the month went for everyone and picked out some of the responses. So yeah. I'm excited to see what you picked out. Yeah, there's like lots of really good responses. So I've had to choose just like a few, but let me just quickly yeah. zip through them. So we've got one here from Morgan.Berry who says that they finally read and loved Anne of Green Gables. So oh, that's always cool. Oh this God. really good one from Lizard Person says, <laughs> really great name. They say, finally read The Last Unicorn. It's the best book I've ever read in my life. Oh my 100 out of 10 recommended. Like that's I've a success. That book. I have, you bought that book for me. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. I was like, didn't I buy that for you? Yeah. Wait, Raylene, that must bump it so up. So now I'm TBR. like, damn, like best book ever. Wow, that's very exciting. Oh um, Alice underscore Marsden says, I read Wild Finally. So that's really exciting. That's huge. However, did not really, read the vanishing the vanishing half, which was on their intended TBR. I feel you, man. Okay. I feel you. Maybe uh, TBRs aren't the strategy. If we, if, it's like exactly. if you're the type of person who has mashed potato books, you're probably not like a been TBR a person. <laughs> Maybe you're not a TBR person. That's Maybe true. there's like a Venn diagram, <laughs> right? Okay, this next one is from Joelle Birch. This one's really funny. It says, oh, well, a complete fail, but I did write most of my master's thesis. Hashtag mashed potato July. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> You'll be free soon. That's really funny. I'm proud of you, though. Keep right? going. Okay, this one's from HMC Gera, who says, finally read House of Leaves. I've been thinking about it for 15 plus oh, years, but was always wow. intimidated. Five stars. That's a major <gasps> success story right there. 15 years is a name. long time. That's a, long That's a time. king potato right there as well. King potato. <laughs> Here's one from <laughs> Hendrix's Book Corner who says, Murakami put me in a reading slump. Yellow face brought me back to life. That's <gasps> a success story, I guess. I really want to know what Murakami put you into a reading slump, though. But I can understand I don't, that. I don't feel like Yellow Face is a mashed potato book, though, right? It just that, came like, out. That just came out yeah so, so that's slightly cheating i guess but good for you I'm glad. it's not cheating it's i just mean that like uh it took a non-mashed potato book to get her back in the true zone true or can something be a mashed potato book even if it's not out yet and like you're just so excited about it no but if you read it right away i guess it's not technically a mashed potato oh well there's no rules here okay Th there's no rules <laughs> this next one comes from rue booney who says horrendous i dnf'd and donated more books than i finished at least i made room on my shelves i related to that one so i wanted to shout it out <laughs> i feel like <laughs> dnfing and getting rid of books totally counts as it succeeding. counts it's part of the mission it's exactly. part of the overall <laughs> dream here right <laughs> <laughs> okay, Yellow Mouse Library says my goal was to read Dune by Frank Herbert and I did it. Thanks for the push. Oh, I needed it. That's awesome. Cool. That's so awesome. That's awesome. That's Connor's favorite book. Right. Yeah, I wanted to shout that out because that's also just a huge book. Um, yeah. Okay, Bookish Adventure says not very good. I DNF'd one book and then read a bunch of new books, but I did finish Ooh. one short classic. <laughs> So there you go. Interesting. Interesting. I know there's success stories and there's non-success stories. We've got to. It's all making of them are me feel better. 
Exactly. Okay. Not everyone is out here reading like 15 books. Although I, <laughs> I can't remember if I screenshotted this one, but I think somebody read like eight mashed potato books, which oh is just God. crazy to me. <laughs> I don't, don't understand how that's possible. Um, a Porterfield 40 says, what if mashed potato may was just creating a bunch of new mashed potato books? <laughs> which I thought was a funny comment. <laughs> I think that's very possible <laughs> that that's what's happening here. I really took a sip of my tea at the wrong moment because that <laughs> don't, was really don't funny. Don't sip any tea. These people are hilarious. Um, <laughs> Love Artemist says, finished one of the books I've had on my, I had the longest on my shelf. I'd say it went great. And mm. then we've got Allison Painter who says, it went so well. I read A Little Life and I think about the characters almost every day, crying face. Uh, <gasps> book Arena underscore book review says, I hated the book I read. At least it's no oh. longer on my shelf. See, another yep. one of those. Um, yeah, that's a thing. That's it's how, totally right. a, thing. a thing. It's totally a thing. And then Millennial Magpie says, I failed. I epically and completely failed. I let shiny new books distract me. Oops. Um, I should have ended on a success story, but that, that was the <laughs> last one I circled. <laughs> I kind of liked that as the ending. Yeah. It's like, well, we'll all just I feel like a lot of people again failed. next most year. Of the general consensus was that most people read maybe one book that they wanted to or okay. none. It was That was kind of like the general, like people who read more than one are few and far the between. Outliers. They're like the 10%. <laughs> So I'm glad to see that. Overall, awesome. they did pretty much similar to what we did. Okay, cool. Yeah. Well, again, we just want to thank everyone for participating with us throughout the month. It was a lot of fun seeing all of your updates and everyone that used the hashtag to share your posts with us was really nice. So we're excited to do it again next year because it's just a fun ongoing project. Mm -hmm. um, and remember, everyone, mashed potatoes are for all year, not just May. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and on that note, uh, <laughs> let's talk about our own reading. Mm -hmm. So, Raylene, do you want to start us off with your reading, your book haul? Where, where your, where's your heart? Let's where's start heart? with my readings. I actually okay. have three books to talk about. So I feel like okay. let's try cool. and um, power through that. Um, so I'll start out by saying my reading has not been the most exhilarating the past couple of weeks. Okay. Like I've read a bunch okay. of books, but I haven't found any new favorites. So I'm about to do some kind okay. of middling reviews because I know people yep. have said before, even if you don't like a book, you should still talk about it because somebody else might like it, which is a good right. point. So I'll That's start true. with the That's first true. book that I finished, which I think I mentioned two weeks ago when I started reading it. And that is Lexicon by Max Berry. Max Berry was born in 1973 in Victoria, Australia, and has written eight novels and a number of short stories and essays. His debut novel, Syrup, was adapted into a movie of the same name in 2013, and a few of his other books have been optioned for film. So, this is my first experience with Max Berry. I read mm. this purely because I got a glowing recommendation from yes. uh, Kelly, one of our listeners, and um, I'm really sorry to say I did not like this book, Kelly. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm Kelly. so sorry. I got so excited when I saw it. I bought it. I started oh, no. reading it, you know, within a couple of months after buying it because I was that excited. And unfortunately, it just wasn't for me. So let me tell you why. So this yeah. book has an incredible premise. I really like the mm. premise. I feel like the execution just didn't work for me. So the premise okay. of this book is that there is kind of like this almost like society, like community of people who are like there's a school that people can go to where they learn the powers yeah. of persuasion and like okay. it's all to do with language and they learn like psychology and linguistics and all this kind of stuff to learn how to like convince people to do things is kind of the okay. long and short of it and so the main character is this girl who's 16 at the beginning of the book and she is like doing street magic she like lives on the streets so she's just trying to make whatever money she can um okay. so that she can eat and whatnot and so she gets recruited by this guy who works for this academy and she ends up going there so that part to me very cool very interesting yep. but there's this other plot line about this man of like an indeterminate age but he's clearly like in his 20s or 30s and he's being kidnapped by people and he's on the run and you don't really know okay. what's going on with him so it's like okay how do these things mesh and um so I feel like that beginning was very exciting. You've got kidnapping, you've got person doing magic and being recruited to an academy. Like I love all of that. But as the story went on, it just kind of fell apart for me a little bit because I found it so predictable. I, oh. as soon as I started to think a little bit, how could these two characters be connected? Yeah. I immediately figured it out and knew exactly it, what was going it, to happen. So okay. that for me can really ruin a book because I don't often predict how things are gonna go. I'm pretty, um, 
like loosey goosey and just let the book come at me and you know I don't yeah. usually try and figure it out but once I if I have figured a book out it's pretty much ruined for me because I'm yeah, yeah. I usually don't do the that the tension so. is gone exactly the there's no tension gone. no intrigue and I just yeah. felt like it was too obvious right from the beginning. It's like, oh, well, this is this is what's obviously going to happen. So that unfortunately didn't really work for me. Um, I also didn't really care about the characters, which is like the secondary thing. If the plot is, you know, moot, yeah. the characters have to be incredible. And yeah. the characters are kind of all unlikable a little bit, which I generally yeah. like, but I just didn't feel any connection to them. And I found myself like kind of skimming through the last maybe 100 pages because oh, I was just gee. like, just let it be over. I also felt like it was too long. This book is maybe 350 pages long. I felt like it could okay. have been half that. Like it should have Oof. been a novella almost. I just okay, felt like it was yeah. too drawn out. But anyway, if it sounds cool to you, maybe you'll like it. Maybe you won't ruin it for yourself by guessing how it's going to end. Um, so all in all, glad that I did read that, though, because it could have become uh, a Kelly. Potato. Kelly, we still love you. I still uh, love you, Kelly. I'm so sorry. Listen, it, it's such a weird review. Like, uh, recommending books is so bizarre. Yeah. Like, you can know a person perfectly. Like, you, it can be your best friend yeah. or your yeah. your partner. And you could give them a book they hate. Like, well, you yeah, like, just don't on know paper, how people are going to read. This sounds like a art. book that I would like. So I yes, totally understand yes. why it yeah. would be recommended to me. And I'm so mad <laughs> that I didn't like it. <laughs> But I am curious enough to maybe read one of his other books because I feel like he has good okay, ideas. Yeah. Like like I said, but when I started reading it, it's kind of like a Blake Crouch book, but minus like all the like crazy sci-fi aspects. It's like right. a little bit sci-fi because some of it is a little bit unbelievable. But um, okay. I feel like he has potential. So if anybody can recommend me another Max Berry book that I might like, please do because I will give him another shot if the right one comes along. Um, cool. Okay, the next book. You're going to be both excited and terrified um, because of how oh. I've prefaced my reviews here. But I also read True Grit by Charles Portis. Charles Portis was born in El Dorado, Arkansas in 1933 and died in 2020 at the age of 86. He was an active writer from 1966 to 1991, and in that time he wrote five novels and one nonfiction book. His first two books, Norwood and True Grit, were both adapted into films. So, first of all, I didn't dislike this book. I just didn't love it as much as okay. you do. So You know what? That's fine. Yeah. So As long as you're not telling me you didn't think it was a bad book, no, you didn't hate it. No. I definitely you didn't, liked it. Exactly. I liked it. Okay. I just Here's what I'm going to say and this might actually also blow your mind. I think that I oh. don't like the audiobook at all. I think the audiobook was the problem for me. That's actually hilarious. Which is shocking, isn't you, it? <laughs> I obviously love the audiobook. Yeah. I feel ah. like for some reason the audiobook didn't work for me like I didn't really like the way Donna Tart narrated it and this isn't That's her so fault funny. it's an editing problem but there were so many mouth sounds in that audiobook I oh there really could were. not it's stand like it. from I think it's from 2003 yeah like it wasn't a very well produced audiobook I guess at in the that way. end at the end of the audiobook my version was like um Make sure to buy the rest of our CDs at the it was local on bookshop. Yeah, you can tell when it's like so, clearly from yeah, CDs. Yeah, I was like, this yeah. is before the world of now with like audiobook production. Exactly. Has so so fancy. that yeah. kind of that kind of thing could just take me out of it completely. Okay. And so yeah. it's like not completely Donna Tartt's fault, and it's not the book's fault. It was just not the right way for me to read it. So I'm definitely planning on giving it a reread one day. Like it's a short book. I could definitely see myself yeah. reading it again and possibly liking it more because I did really like Maddie. Like the main character is oh, yeah. super spunky. And like, I love that yes. for like a little 14 year old girl, just like not taking shit from anyone and just like never yeah. backing down when she wants something like she will get it, which I really liked. So I feel like as a main character, she's super awesome. And um, just in general, like a Western that's led by a female character is also very cool because that's kind of unusual, I guess. Like it's more of a modern thing, which I found really interesting that this was written in the 60s and yeah. that was what he went with. So I thought that was really cool. I feel like it's kind of ahead of its time in some mm. ways. Um, and plot wise, I just kind of felt like the plot was a little bit too straightforward maybe for me, but that's totally. you know it is what it is it was kind of just like all right and then this happened and then this happened and then this happened and then it was over so do you I don't know. agree the one of the strengths i think the book has is that it doesn't really drag like it's pretty much like we're doing this thing we're doing this thing we're it's doing true. this thing it's over. it was pretty like, the snappy. audiobook is like five hours I think, it was six hours? just over six hours but just, okay so it's like pretty, pretty short. short for yeah. an audiobook and i was just like i like that the book just like was like we're not gonna drag this out to totally me. yeah that's definitely a strength I agree with yeah. that. Um, but yeah, those are pretty much all my comments. Like, I, I liked it. 
I didn't love it, but okay. I'm willing to give it a try in another way. I just wanted to like kind of talk about the audiobook for some people who might not like it, <laughs> just like me. Like there are that things that might irk other other readers. Yeah. But. The reason that I'm okay with what you've just said mm. is because over the last month or two, I've had so many people DMing me about how much they love to oh, that's or good. how they love the audiobook. I had this one I think I may have mentioned this, but it was a person who was like the audiobook was amazing. Donna Tart didn't read the book. She performed it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, God, it's true. It's true. So she definitely did. It's, again, it's just like up to everyone's different. But exactly. I know that the people are liking it. I'm so glad that you've gotten so many people to read it because I feel like it's such a random book that most I know. most of our it's listeners kind of probably wouldn't, wouldn't read. <laughs> so yeah. I really like that for you and for the podcast. Like it's kind of just a funny funny little thing that happened okay well i've got one last book that i wanted to review i read so many books oh my goodness um so awesome. you already know about this because i was i talked about it on our live show yesterday but i finished reading out there by kate yes. folk kate folk's writing has appeared in publications like the new yorker and granta and out there is her first book she's currently working on a novel and developing a tv series based on the title story in this collection the stories in this collection are eerie, bizarre, and take a look at the weird forces that exist beneath the surface of everyday experiences. So this is another book that I, I liked it, but I didn't love it. I feel like I was kind of misled by the marketing and also whoever, somebody, I feel like I recommend, I saw this on a, a TikTok or something that was books that are like Black Mirror. And I feel like that was a really misleading way to talk about the book because it wasn't Damn. really there was maybe two stories that were black mirror-esque and to me okay. what black mirror-esque means is that it's like looking at technology and the future and where we're going as a society because of technology yeah. specifically and so i feel like this kind of got put under that umbrella because there were a couple of stories that did fit that but uh, most of them were just kind of like bizarre kind of magical realism short stories which mm is what you'd expect from like a lot of short story collections but it was pretty good i really liked like the first story which is out there and then the final story was really good there was also the story called the turkey rumble that i found very hilarious oh so cool. there were some really really stellar stories in there but there were a few that i wasn't a huge fan of and one of them was really long <laughs> and yeah. that one i can't remember what it was called but it was i mean there were some interesting stories like the one that was really long that i wish was shorter was kind of cool it was about these people who have like a bone melting disease so every night like they're in the special hospital where they have to like regrow their bones every night kind of thing which is just so Ooh. stressful but it was like a really really long story <laughs> and there was okay. a love triangle like it was kind of weird Oh, but um <laughs> yeah so like there was aspects of the book that i thought were really cool and like some of the stories were like two or three pages long so they're short and snappy and really like got their message across in a few pages which i always enjoy um yeah. but so all in all pretty okay but um okay. I, I wouldn't like recommend it to people and tell them that it's like black mirror because it's just not no. <laughs> but there are there <laughs> are some like kind of ai like humanoid robot things going on in a couple of the stories and those were some of my favorite ones so that's the title story out there is kind of about that and then there's a companion story at the very end of the collection that mm. is about similar things so it's definitely worth reading but just go into it to knowing what you're getting mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. but that's it i mean did you did you finish anything i can't remember if you said you finished something yes i did finish a book and i have a little tale to tell Ooh, about it as well please do um, but the book that I read is Gender Queer by oh, Maya yeah. Kobabe. Before I talk about the book, I want to talk about how I got the book. So I went to Aniganish, which is a town here in oh. Nova Scotia, and um, went to another one of the bookshops oh, I have to go to. Yeah. As you know, and as our listeners may know, I am doing a challenge this year. I am trying to visit every single bookshop in Nova Scotia. Indie bookshop, mm. I should say. Every indie bookshop. <laughs> every chapter. <laughs> every single chapter. Um, just because I think it would be fun. I don't know. I just thought it would be fun. Totally. And uh, like when I first moved to Nova Scotia, it was covid and it was like, I felt like I wasn't seeing a lot of the province. Mm -hmm. And it's such a small province there. Everything is within driving distance. Like I think from one tip to the other tip is probably like eight hours. Oh, so, you know, like yeah. that, that's like a big distance, but it's totally doable. Yeah. Right. So big, I'm just like, it's not big. So I'm like from the top to the bottom, like the other way, yeah. the width of it, I think is only like 
an hour and a half two hours oh my gosh because it's very like long and skinny right, right. so basically i'm like you can kind of dart around <laughs> and i want i was like that would be such like visiting all the indie bookshops would be such a great way to like visit all these towns mm-hmm. and and like see the the rest of the province so i visited the curious cat bookshop Ooh. And I will insert, or well, CJ will insert some footage here of the shop and stuff because I took some video and I took some photos for the Instagram Cute. so you guys can check out that shop. It was really lovely. It was a very lovely indie bookshop, very bright, like it was very white and clean and mm-hmm. uh, like a lot of daylight, which is always really nice. Um, they also had tea, like it's it says tea and books oh, cute. and i got so excited about the books that i forgot to look at the tea oh. <laughs> which i Rough. really regret because they have a lot of fun tea and i think th- i'm pretty sure they make it themselves oh my goodness. like it's like part of their whole thing um but it smelled really good in there and like the first thing i said when i stepped in i was like wow it smells good must be the tea <laughs> <laughs> which anyway i'm so sorry (laughs) that's what hanging out with me is like (laughs) that's true um but yeah so they were really really lovely they had a really great selection of books ray you know like sometimes you go into a bookshop and so this was a mixed uh new Mm. and used so it had one big wall of used books but the most of the shop was new books okay you know you go into a shop and sometimes you're like the the vibes are not here like the selection is off the selection at the shop was really really good they had a really big um like pride lgbt plus area and so i was looking through all of those and that's where i spotted gender queer and i was like oh well we just talked about this on the podcast because on one of the recent episodes i did book news and i talked about how gender queer is currently the most banned and challenged book in the u.s which is obviously really upsetting and i was like you know what it's pride month I don't like what's going on with the censorship. I'm going to buy the book. (laughs) and I'm buying the book. Even if I don't read it, I just want to have supported it. So I bought the book and then it was sitting on my desk for a while. And I was like, I bet you I could just read that real quick. (laughs) Real quick. And so I did. I read it real quick. So let me chat about gender queer. Maya Kobabe is an author and illustrator from California. Gender queer is her first full length book but E has also been included in several anthologies and has had many comics published in different publications. Maya Kobabe worked for over a decade in libraries and has a new book slated for release in 2025. So I realized that I didn't really know much about the book as I was starting to read it, right? I was like, I knew it was a memoir about gender. It's a graphic (laughs) memoir, right? Or is it? A graphic memoir, yes, yes, yes. It's a graphic novel. Um, I was like, I knew that I, that's all I knew, but I don't, I didn't know anything about Maya's life. Yeah. I didn't know where Maya came from. You know what I mean? I was totally. like, I have no idea what's new. going on. No clue what's happening. Um, I think that this is such an interesting book. God, because the whole time I was reading it as well, really, I couldn't get away from the fact that this is the most challenged book in the U.S., totally. right? So you're, kind you're reading it and that's it. in the back of yeah. your mind, right? You're thinking like what's bothering Pete be like the certain type of person yeah. like why is this being challenged like why should we have this in the libraries why is this important is mm-hmm. it you know what I mean like you're asking all of these big questions so to, well to kind of strip away from that just to answer like what is this book yeah it really is a non-fiction memoir so it's, it's just straight up facts yeah. about Maya's life and everything that Maya went through from childhood to university age um with gender and sexuality figuring out pronouns figuring out how they feel about intimacy feeling out how they feel about the clothing um that my would wear or how hair impacts how you feel about yourself and all of these little moments it really was very vignette Okay. So, like, it did not, the book did not have a straight plot. Yeah. It would hop back and forth a lot. I did find that a little distracting because, like, we'd be seeing a memory and then it would just stop. The memory would just stop. And oh. then there would be, like, a panel about something else. And I'd be like, oh, okay. And then I'd flip the page and it, like, we'd never go back to that memory. Yeah. That's and a I was jarring. like, oh, I th- it was a little jarring, but I think maybe I just went into it with, 
expecting it to be a little bit more a memoir mm -hmm. and it was actually more kind of like these were moments these were glimpses these were lessons i learned these were different things that i remember about growing up yeah so in that way it was a like i i didn't gel with it like i didn't read it and i was like oh well, like this is i didn't i don't know it was like my new favorite graphic mm -hmm. memoir or anything the other thing I will say is I definitely think that it, I'm not the target audience. Oh. Yeah. Like, I, and I, I really felt that I was as I was reading it. You know, like, sometimes you're reading a book and you're like, this book is for teens. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad that they have it. But because I'm not a right. teen, I'm not, like, hanging on to every word. Yeah, like, kind of I've already heard these things before and yes, understand exactly. these concepts. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Exactly, right? Um, And so I was reading it and I was thinking about, like, if. I was a teenager, if it was teenage Ariel, and I was thinking about gender, and I was like not feeling sure about my gender or not feeling like I was sure about my sexuality and I read this book, it would have meant the world to me. Totally. Like this is a firsthand account of someone figuring out what gender means uh, for their person, for, for, you know what I mean? And so mm -hmm. I was just like, this would have meant a lot to me, but I think I just wasn't. And so yeah. I was, I was tw a 28 woman, 28 year old woman reading the book. So I was like right. a little detached to it in that way as well. And so to go back to the question of like, why is this banned? Yeah. I'm like, it's banned because it makes people uncomfortable. Yeah. Because there's people out there who are not compassionate and are not tolerant and are not like loving of everyone. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong in this book. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's absolutely nothing. But if, there, if anything, it would, I just know that it would help so many people, people that are struggling. Yeah. yeah. It would help people that are like feeling like outsiders. Like, cause that really is the central theme of the book. The central theme of the book is like, what, it's like, what is it like to be an outsider? Like you mm -hmm. should, you need to be yourself. It's so important to just be yourself yeah. and live true true to yourself like that is the theme of the book that's what i want every teen and child to know yeah like i want everyone to be themselves no matter what the hell that means it just doesn't matter and so you know reading it you're you are thinking god this is frustrating that this is being banned because i i can imagine yeah. how it would help kids especially it's, it's one of those horrible like circular things where it's like probably the places where this is being banned is the place where they people like this are getting the most abuse yeah, so that's a good point it's a place where the book is almost needed the most i will definitely say this book is probably for like 15 up and above okay. there's a lot of very explicit sex scenes and a mm. lot of um nudity and not like a lot it's not <laughs> it's not excessive and that's that's why i was like do i mention that i was like i think i do kind of want to mention that because um, it is when I was reading it, I didn't know if was, I'm like, is this for children? Is right. this for like, what age is this for? And I'm reading, I was like, okay, I, I really feel this is like 13 above 15 and above because there's mm -hmm. like a lot of discussion of sex toys and, and genitalia and stuff. And I'm like, it's all, it should be in here. It's part yeah. of the journey. Yeah. It's important stuff. We need to talk about that stuff. It's not, there's nothing wrong with that stuff, but it is like, you know, age is always. Yeah. Like, you want to give stressful. that to a 10 year old. <laughs> I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't, I would be like, let's read that in a couple of years mm -hmm. together <laughs> when, when we're not later. like, yeah, <laughs> later. Um, so it's so, it was so interesting reading this book, the context, I couldn't get outside of the cultural context of it. I was like, yeah. I was like, why are people banning this? I was like, oh, I wonder if this is one of the pages that people don't like. And <laughs> I'm like, oh, I wonder like, oh, and then, and then you're thinking, um, yeah, I don't know. You're just thinking about what that could have meant to you as a kid. And I'm just, I'm glad that this book exists. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so there, that's my very messy review. I'm all over the place. Very good. Um, all right. I will now talk about the book that I'm currently Ooh. reading. And then you can talk about what you're currently yeah. reading. I am currently reading A Single Man by Christopher Isherwood. Ooh. Continuing on with Pride Month. Yeah. I'm uh, on another, uh, this is a gay classic. Um, Written in 64. What if I just read books from the 60s now? <laughs> I mean, that would be kind of a vibe. Not real. That lie. would be kind of a vibe, actually. Um, I don't know why I picked this one up. I don't, like, I really genuinely, <laughs> I was like, what do I want to read next? And then I, this book just popped into my head. And I was like, oh, yeah, that is a book. That, this is mashed potato to the max, you guys. <laughs> one of the very funny things about this book is I have annotations in here. Oh. 
up until page 44. So, classic. and this is not a long book. Yeah, classic area. Classic <laughs> you love reading area. the first 40 pages of books. God, I love that. I love reading the first 40. So good. Uh, this book is 186 pages, so it is Ooh. not a long book. Up until page 44, there's annotations from an aerial from, I think, eight years ago. Oh, my God. <laughs> I bought this book. I started reading it, and then I put it down. I did not put the book down because I wasn't liking it. I remember distinctly being like, God, that's a good book. I'm excited to get back to it. Yeah. It just took eight years. Yeah. Good God. <laughs> um, okay, so this is the story of George, who is a widower. Okay. He lives in a house in California in a suburb in the 60s. And so as you can imagine, even though he's described the community as like pretty bohemian and like a little bit hippiness going yeah. on there, it's still the 60s. And he's like, the community used to be more like that. Now, a lot of the vets have returned from the war. They've planted down, they're starting families. Mm -hmm. And so the, the community has become a little bit more like there's the wives that do this and the husbands do this. It's like pretty traditionalist. Mm -hmm. And he's a gay man. Nobody knows that he's gay. It's a secret. Okay. He had, obviously they weren't married married because you could, it was illegal, mm -hmm. but he had his husband, Jim, who it seems, and I don't know this yet because I'm not, I haven't read the whole book yet, but it seems that they had a beautiful relationship. Like they really loved each other yeah. and it was like a really beautiful relationship. Jim has died. Oh. We learned this from like right away. Jim's passed away. And so this book is Christopher, Christopher Sherwood, yeah, the author, <laughs> is George um, dealing with the loss of his partner, but also having to almost hide the loss yeah, of his partner. Yeah, that's the worst. It's just terrible, right? Because it's like you can't mourn him publicly because like, you're why not are you allowed so to be gay. Like, why are you so sad? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, why are you so sad? It's It was just your buddy or whatever. Yeah. Um, he, I'm gotten to a point where he's like, basically, some people ask, like, where's Jim? And he's like, oh, he's just visit. He won't. He hasn't even told people <gasps> that he's died. Oh he's like, he's just visiting family because he's like, doesn't even. He doesn't want questions because yeah, questions lead it. to other questions, yeah. etc. So he's having to deal with all of this on his own. He's so lonely and isolated. Um, but the book is so beautiful. Like it, the writing mm. is gorgeous and it's scathing. Uh, it's like cutting it's like really yeah. really expertly written about the period and about what's going on with this character and the one of the really interesting things about the book is that it's takes it takes place over 24 hours oh that's the best yeah so it starts when he wakes up oh my gosh and <laughs> like literally the first thing that happens is that he's like uh be like uh, having consciousness mm -hmm. do you know what i mean he's like becoming aware of yeah. his body and he like ha he stretches and then he like issues the first command is kind of what it says. And he's like, I got to get up and he gets up and the book starts and you're like, okay, wow. We're like r literally tracing every moment of this guy's no day. Um, and it's a really cool structure for the book. Cause you're like, you're like I like wonder a, what's going to happen in that day. You know? Exactly. It's supposed to be a really typical day in his life. It says on the syn synopsis, huh. I'm not sure if that's how accurate that is, but it's supposed to be just be like, this is a normal day in this guy's life. So, I'm really loving it so far. It's really, really interesting. Um, I'm really excited to keep reading it because it's just so good. And the, oh, the other thing I wanted to mention, really, mm -hmm. is that my annotations from eight years ago are so funny. I thought I was a little intellectual. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I can really tell I was at the beginning of my undergrad and I'm like, I am a literature student. Oh, so what could this mean? I'm circling things. I'm like <laughs> making these really dumb little notes. But I'm like reading it as a 28 year old Ariel and I'm like, God, 20 year old Ariel was really thinking, yep. you know, like I was really like, I could, I can also see like how much school had trained a specific type of reading mm. into me that was like, you need to be noticing signs. Like what could these yeah. metaphors mean? You weren't just reading it for it's fun and annotating for fun. No, exactly. <laughs> it's so funny. Um, all right, Ray, what are you currently reading? Yes. So yeah. this is what I'm currently reading and also kind of the beginning of my book haul. So maybe after I'm done okay. talking about this, we can dive into Perfect. that. Um, but I got Page Boy by Elliot Page. Oh, fantastic. I yeah. had pre-ordered it. And um, so I got it a day or two after it came out when I finally picked cool. it up. And um, 
I just decided now's the perfect time to read it. Why wait? Why put it off? And um, so I'm, I just started it last night and I'm over a hundred pages into it, I think. Yeah, I'm on page okay. 111. So I kind of just like sat down for a couple hours and didn't want to stop reading. Um, it is kind of devastating so far. Like the book is mostly okay. about terrible things that happened to Elliot as a child, both in his family and in like the Hollywood movie industry. Um, so it's kind of sad so far to be quite honest like there's not a yep. lot of hope that i'm seeing so i'm hoping that it'll kind of come around to a more joyful place at some point because it is kind of just like how... one bad thing after another how old was he when he started acting oh like really young i, I don't know the exact age but sure um maybe but like, like 12 or something like pretty pretty young okay um, gotcha. yeah he was okay. in a couple of things before eventually landing juno and i think he was like 16 or 17 in Juno and that was 2007 so whatever math <laughs> math that out did it talk about Nova Scotia yeah yeah it's actually really interesting like I'm sure cool. you would recognize a lot of like he talks about like the streets that he lived on and like different places stuff like that so I feel oh, like you awesome. would specifically really enjoy that aspect of it because it does just yeah. like scream Canada and also just in general it is really really Canadian like he'll be like talking about oh, much right. music and all this stuff and it's like yeah that's like Canadian MTV and there's all these different yes. like Canadian references that are really fun for me to read as a Canadian. So I'm really enjoying that. Um, cool. It does kind of bounce around in time quite a lot as well. Like it's not very linear, which we'll see mm. how that goes. But, you know, you'll get a little okay. bit of childhood and then you'll get a little bit of this is me now. And then you'll get a little bit of like, oh, this was 10 years ago. So I'm interested to see like how that'll all kind of play out in the end. But it also is really interesting getting to see um, just talking about like the movies that he was in and stuff and like this is what it yeah. was like preparing to be in the movie hard candy and then this was whiplash like he's talking about right. whiplash where i'm at not whiplash whip it, whip it. <laughs> definitely whip it <laughs> that's funny um but yeah talking about preparing for whip Elliot it is really Page interesting is actually miles teller <laughs> they're the same person didn't you know <laughs> oh man yeah he was drumming on roller skates so <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm really enjoying that so far and just hearing about the whole experience of making Whip It with all the awesome yeah. ladies that are in that movie um, and just how like supportive they all were of each other and all them like learning roller derby together is just lots of fun. So it does have like some moments of levity, but it is okay. kind of a depressing book so far. So that's what I'll have to say for anybody who's looking that's to read it. It is quite traumatizing, I would say. Like it's how about many... a lot of trauma from his past. So how many pages is it? Um, I can check that for you. It's pretty short, though. It is yeah, that's what I thought. 265 pages. So okay, gotcha. I'm almost halfway through. And like, if I have enough time today, I could easily sit down and finish it because it is very readable. So I'm okay, definitely cool. really liking it so far. I would recommend it so it's far. It's just sad. Yeah, it is you just like really it, sad. sad. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. a thing. Yeah. Oh, and then I guess I could just jump into my book haul if you've got yes. nothing else to talk about here. So, um, so yeah, <laughs> one of the things I was, I also bought True Grit, as you will have seen. I got the cover that you really liked, which made me feel kind of bad when I picked it up, but yeah, I, I picked that up anyway. So I got that, but I did get something else that you will be very excited about. Intriguing. I got the Blue Castle oh by Ellen God. Montgomery, and it's in a beautiful old turquoise copy. That. That's actually epic. It's so Where did awesome. you find that? Oh, at my local used bookstore. I was there oh, cool. pre-ordering Page Boy, actually, a couple of weeks ago. And I was like, do you have True Grit and the Blue Castle? And the guy was like, yes, we do. Here you go. And so that was just like a really great book shopping day for me. Um, but yeah, that's they just so happened to have this funny. like cool old copy, which also has like illustrations in it. So that's what? kind of fun. I can't remember. Did your copy oh have God. illustrations? No. That's the only one I see so far, just some guy. But I'm really excited to have this. I'm, who is that man? I don't know who that man was. <laughs> man in hat. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited to have that. Um, oh, but maybe wow. I'm not in any rush to read it at this point. I'm like, let's just like be chill. I don't want to like read all of your favorite books and hate them all. I don't want you to read it because <laughs> I don't think I can take you disliking much more of my That's reading. what I mean. Like I need to maybe give that a couple of years to kind of ease off the ass pedal a little bit. But I'm... I'm more confident that I'll like that one for some yeah. reason. I feel like that one's more mm -hmm. up my alley. So yeah, so those are kind of the books that I bought for myself, but I was also sent some books um, by Viz Media. The wonderful people at Viz Media oh, sent me yeah. some manga, which is super exciting. Whoa, cool. um, so there was two that I specifically requested and then they just sent me a bonus one, which was super Ooh. awesome. So um, the first two that I um, actually requested, the first one is Until I Love Myself, The Journey of a Non-Binary Manga Artist. So oh. that is, this is a, like a debut series. This is just volume one. No idea how many volumes it's going to be, but this is a nonfiction, like 
memoir manga. I don't know what to call that. Um, but mm. it's, yeah, I don't think I've, have I read a book like this? Probably not. I feel like there's not that many um, nonfiction manga. But anyway, this one mm. sounds really cool. Uh, not cool, but it sounds really interesting. So the yeah. the author, Poppy Pesuyama, is a non-binary manga artist. And this story is kind of about them working under another manga artist, I think, and kind of the way that they were treated. So I think this is another kind of like oh, depressing <laughs> book, <great>. but um, <laughs> but I, it's still a story that needs to be told, you know? So I am pr definitely gonna read it this month because it feels like the perfect time to read it. And I just got it, trying to read all the books I get. So yeah, mm. really excited about that one. And then the next one I got is Goodbye Airy by Tatsuki Fujimoto, which okay. this one is exciting because I, I requested it because the plot sounded cool, not realizing that this is the same author slash artist who um, wrote Look Back, which is a another manga that I got from Viz Media yeah. a while ago. They also yeah. did Chainsaw Man. So that's what um, this author oh, okay. is most well known for. I didn't even realize that when I grabbed this. I was like, oh, that just sounds really cool. Um, so this one is about a young character, like a teenager who makes movies and his mother is dying at the beginning of the book and she asks him to kind of film her last moments, which he does. And then he also meets this mysterious girl and they start making a movie together. So I'm like, this sounds interesting. Another sad one, but about making movies, which I find really interesting. So yeah, really excited cool. for that. And then the bonus one that they sent me um forewarning it looks very terrifying when i show you the cover you're going to be scared it's called soichi by junji ito um it looks it's just this terrifying oh, yeah. boy with That's nails in his nice. mouth um so i didn't specifically request this one but i do really like junji ito so i was yeah. very pleasantly surprised um to get this one this is a short story collection uh, quite a lot of his books are actually oh. short stories I don't know if that's widely known, but um, most of his no. books are just collections of like horror short stories. So I haven't read any of his short fiction yet. I've only read his kind of full length manga. So spooky. I'm really excited to have that, but it is quite spooky and terrifying yeah, looking. That's pretty spooky um, but that's everything. That's what I got. So thanks again to the people at Viz Media for reaching out to us because uh. I always want manga. I can't say <laughs> no to manga. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. All right. Well, We'll see where we get to next week. I don't know how much of what we are currently reading we will finish. Maybe all of it. I think all of it. <laughs> Maybe we got all of this. It. Maybe everything. Hmm. Um, all right. We're going to finish off with a little bit of book news before we head off. Mm. All right. It's time for some book news. Everybody. Bring it on. Stand back, Stephen King. The stand isn't the biggest stand in the book world anymore. Ottawa Public Library takes a stand on censorship. Whoa. <laughs> you really took me on a journey. I thought this was going to be about Stephen King. <laughs> no, it's about the Ottawa Public Library. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's very interesting. Like we were talking about censorship with genderqueer and we talked about yeah. censorship a couple of weeks ago and stuff. And when we found out like what the most banned books are, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. And so I was looking, I was just looking at news and this piece came, it's pretty interesting. So I'm reading the version from the Ottawa Citizen um, about how the Ottawa Public Library has come out with an official stance on the censorship Ooh. situation. And I think this is really interesting for a few reasons. Yeah. Number one, because it's Canada. Most of the time we hear about the states and all of yeah. their censorship stuff that's going on. And so I was like excited to hear something here too, because it's Ottawa, which is our capital city. And a lot of the time, the stuff that Ottawa does echoes out. Mm -hmm. um, but thirdly, because I, I was like, it's interesting to hear a library's perspective, not just some yeah. person on the internet. No, like it's, this is the official library stance. Yeah. Um, so this is a quote from, uh, somebody at the library, I don't remember what it was. Um, there are right-wing people who don't want to read things. There are left-wing people who don't want to read things. The laws and the courts set the limit. Just because I don't like something doesn't mean you shouldn't have access to it. If the Ottawa Public Library got rid of every book that people <laughs> found harmful, distasteful, or offensive, there wouldn't be books left in the library. Yep. And then the CEO of the library, which is funny to think that a library has a CEO, <laughs> yeah, but there weird. you go. Uh, says, we have made a bold statement about how we intend to live this value. And basically, they've decided that unless it's illegal, Ooh. which, right, there, I guess there are some books that are legal, um, <laughs> which I've never thought <laughs> about, scary. but okay. But unless the book is illegal, they will stock it. Cool. Um, 
they care about. It says, in a nutshell, the policy allows users to have unfettered access to any information as long as it is legal, according to Canadian courts. Um, So they're sort of like taking the stance on it doesn't matter who is trying to censor it or Mm -hmm. change it or ban it. Our job as a library is to have make the information available to make to the, the information people. available that's cool that's really cool which is very cool i i i'm like i've thought a lot about because my job is online and stuff i've thought a lot about like what is the hill you're willing to die on right <laughs> yeah like you sometimes you got to pick the battle and i'm like this is a hill that's worth willing to die on mm-hmm. like it's it's so important that the bottom line is you don't censor anything yeah. like you just have to make it available and it's so hard because there's stuff out there that i hate books <laughs> that i hate that i'm like i wish that hadn't been written or published hey. and it didn't exist but i at the core i still think it's got to be available mm-hmm. because it's too easy to flip the other way right so anyway pretty interesting um the whole censorship debate is fascinating because you know on the other hand i saw there was a fact that like in new brunswick um well yeah in new brunswick it's it's at the beginning of this article which i will link in the show notes in new brunswick there have been more challenges to materials in public libraries in the first few weeks of this spring than there Mm -hmm. have been in the province's entire history what why (laughs) god only knows (laughs) What's going on over there? Jeez. No idea. Um, oh, look, in British Columbia, the RCMP investigated after a member of the advocacy group Action for Canada, I don't know what that is, objected to books in public schools, including It's Perfectly Normal, a book about puberty and sexual health, and The Bluest Eye. <laughs> what? what? I don't know what's going on in The Bluest Eye. Uh, the RCMP concluded that books the, that books did not meet the definition of child pornography as was claimed oh that's interesting Whoa. okay so that's what they were trying to ban them as Whoa. go rcmp on this one very specific thing yeah geez. uh yeah well anyway so you see it's like it's happening everywhere so it's cool to see that the ottawa public library take a stand on that it was neat um okay and my other <laughs> the the headline for this one Bring is on. not very good <laughs> superpowers more like super show i don't i i gave up when i wrote that you one, did I so think. well on the first one that you didn't have enough i know room for the second i one. ran out of energy <laughs> i put it my soul went into the first one um a show that i didn't realize had such a turbulent journey is nimona by noel stevenson oh yeah yeah so this show is basically coming out like it comes out the end of this now. month i think or That's mid-month. it. Yeah, Nimona it comes, out comes to. It says in June. Yeah. So I'm not exact. Oh, June 30th. Well, maybe. no, that's different. I feel like it's June, June 30th, something. So it's right around the corner. Especially by the time this episode comes yes. out, it'll be right around the corner. Um, but when I was reading into the research of this show, it turns out that it has had one of the rockiest situations oh. ever. So basically, it got sold a couple of years ago, like option to be a yeah. show. Um, and I'm trying to remember. I forget the name of the like little studio that bought it and everything. It wasn't even a little studio. It was a big studio and it was like really exciting. And Noel Stevenson posted about it on their mm-hmm. social media and it was like a big thing. And then that studio shut down and the show got no. canceled and it was just like completely gone. Over. Shoot. And um, so it was good. completely canceled. And it says where it was later canceled despite reportedly being 75% completed. <gasps> but that was after it had moved to a different place. So like, it's like been in production hell. It's been apparently a complete nightmare, but finally a trailer is out. It's coming it's to great. Netflix. And I wanted to mention this one just because I know that so many people love that graphic novel. Yeah, me included. Yeah, you included. And the other thing is, I was looking at the cast. It's absurdly stacked, really. Oh, really? I actually, for some reason, haven't looked into the cast. I just watched the trailer and was like, wow, I'm excited. And then forgot about it. So, Chloe Grace Moretz uh, is the voice of Nimona. Okay. Riz Ahmed, (gasps) who is so cool, um, plays Ballister Boldheart. I haven't read this book, so I don't know. He's and like then the this guy. one was really surprising, weird, funny, and interesting to me. Yes. Yui, or Eugene Lee Yang, who is one of the Try Guys. You know, 
<laughs> yeah. I just got so excited. <laughs> your, your face went, so, you literally jaw dropped. That actually makes me so happy, one, because I really like Eugene, but also that makes me happy for him <laughs> to, to like, have this know. opportunity. They're playing Ambrosius Golden Loin. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know these characters. I don't That's know what's incredible. going on. That's incredible. So weird, but, but I love it. I know. I saw him in the article. I was like, what? <laughs> wow. <laughs> what? That's, That's awesome. Uh, so there you go. A little blast of some news for everyone. Keep it short this week since we're already at our full episode here. But mm -hmm. thank you so much to everyone for listening and hanging out with us. Love the pod. This week I've hung out with two people that are friends of mine, but like aren't really like close friends. Mm -hmm. And had like big hangouts with them. Like we took our friendship to the next level. Oh, very nice. And both of them asked me about the podcast. And when I was explaining it to them, Raylene, I just felt my heart get so oh. big. I was like, I do it with my best friend. She lives in BC, but we <laughs> stayed in touch. And like, and like, they're like, what do you do? I was like, we just talk. Yeah, we just <laughs> chat for so, a good long time. I love the pod and I'm so grateful. And actually in both of those conversations, they're like, how do you support it? Like, how is it possible? Because yeah. of, and I was like, it's the patrons. Yep, the I literally people. talked about the patrons to these two people. <laughs> I was like, oh man, listen to me. Anyways, okay, thank you so much. We will talk to you next week. In the meantime, we are gonna go record our Patreon mini pod podcast. Podcast. <laughs> podcast <laughs> um movie tub where we talk about the movies and shows we've been watching so we're gonna go do that and we'll talk to you all next week thanks so much bye bye <laughs>